Let's turn to John chapter number 19. Let me have it. I'll preach it. Amen. I'm y'all glad to be in church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Today, appreciate y'all asking. Thank you. Amen. In case y'all was wondering. Amen. It was good. I hadn't used my Starbucks gift card yet. But I will. Kelly, correction, Kelly will. Amen. John 19. I'm, I do have a, my wife told me I need to confess my sins. My wife said I need to confess my sins. A few weeks ago I was preaching about seek ye first and talked about, you know, getting dogs and things. And uh, <laughs> last week I went down to, I didn't. Yeah, just be quiet. I went down to to McCray, Georgia, and picked up a bird dog. So y'all pray for me, amen. My wife don't leave me. Amen. She's going to divorce me. Amen. I might come home and the dog and my stuff be sitting in the yard, amen. <laughs> but I mean, as every husband, hunter, d- dad does, you know, we try to justify it and got such a good deal on the dog, I had to get it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and they always make the comment, well, even if I didn't want to keep it, I could sell it, you know, and double my money. No intentions of doing such, but uh, but I did get a good deal on it. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all ain't buying that, are you? Amen. Amen. John, uh, John chapter number 19. We'll look at a few verses here. This is going to be, I guess you would call it a four-part sermon. I don't want to get all fancy on you or nothing like that. But uh, but it does have four parts to it. I'm just going to preach one tonight and uh, probably preach one each night for the next four weeks, I guess. If I don't get sidetracked, amen. I know it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do, I, I, you know how us preachers are. We'll say it's going to be four parts and it turns to end up being six months worth out of two parts, amen. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> uh, preacher and I are going to try to have a meeting tonight after church, so I don't want to try to preach too long. He said, the longer you preach determines when you get home, amen, so, amen, all right, let's look at verse 23, y'all, uh, you, you know already what's going on leading up into this point here, uh, where he's crucified, being crucified in the process of, he's already been hung on the cross, and as preacher said this morning, Pilate has written, uh, the title and put it above his head, um, it was written in Hebrew, Greek and Latin, which were the most, uh, the three most common languages at that time, and uh, he's already been beaten. He's already been scourged and mocked, and the beard plucked from his face, and the crown of thorns placed on his head. But I want to, I want to, I want to look at four characters, <clears throat> and as I said, it'll be four p- different parts. But I want to look at four parts, four characters that were at the crucifixion at this uh, at this time. Uh, that walked away from it unchanged somehow. Amen. I don't know how you could witness and experience uh, such, uh, such, a, such a dramatic display and uh, such a gruesome display of, of a human being being beaten to death in such a way and not be changed somehow. Amen. Uh, but I want to look at four people that were there that walked away unsaved, unchanged, amen, that somehow were unaffected by the crucifixion. 
And let's look here, verse 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garment and made four parts to every uh, soldier apart. And also his, uh, let's see, also his coat. Uh, now the coat was, with, was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Uh, they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it. <clears throat> whose it shall be they, uh, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots, these things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of uh, Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples uh, standing by, whom he loved, he saith uh, unto, the, unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And uh, let's look at verse 27. I want you to look there. He also says, Behold thy mother. And then later on in verse 28, he says, I thirst. In verse 30, he says, It is finished. Also, we know that he said multiple times, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he, he's, he's not holding these soldiers and these men accountable for their actions because he says uh, they're, 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 they're lost. Amen. They're blinded by sin. And let me just go off on a side note right here. And I want us to acknowledge that fact that, listen to me, that sometimes we need to understand that sinners are going to act like sinners. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Don't go into a bar and expect a sinner or a drunk man to start talking like he just got out of church. Amen. So a lot of times us as Christians, we get around people. Well, he ought not act like that. He shouldn't have said that to me. Well, listen, we need to understand that they are lost people. Amen. I used to get so mad at my uh, some of my family members for not acting right around me and not being respectful of the fact that I'm a Christian and the fact that I'm a preacher. But listen to me, they're lost it took me a long time to understand that. So when we're around lost people, you need to understand they're going to do what lost people do. Yeah. Amen. And that's what the Lord was saying right here. Uh, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. We need to understand that lost people are going to act like lost people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we need, to, we need to understand that and not, uh, not get mad about it. Amen. Uh, it's, it's, but, it's, you know, obviously we want people to be respectful around our family members, our, uh, you know, our children, things like that. But we need to understand that lost people are going to act like lost people. Multiple times he says in the scripture, <clears throat> he, he makes references to th different things. And he says, I thirst. And uh, multiple times he can be quoted here on the cross saying different things. Are you all with me? So as he's, as, he's, as he's on the cross, Brother Mike, dying, we hear the Son of God making comments as he's on the cross. Not only that, do we see him forgiving a, a person, I mean literally saving a man's soul from hell right beside of him. Amen? But I was, I was doing uh, some, some reading, and at this time... Uh, in this time frame, this would have been a very busy time for this for this area. A lot of things going on. A lot of people visiting uh, for the feast. A lot of people coming in. A lot of, a lot of people there, and the noise probably was just. I don't, the the writer that I read after likened it to uh, being in like a like a very large crowd at a ball game. A lot of stuff going on in the town, a lot of people walking around, probably a lot of people at the cross, at the scene. So a lot of talking, a lot of things going on, and more than likely, unless you were very close and trying to listen to what he said, you probably wouldn't have heard a lot of his conversation and the things that he was saying. But I want to look at this one soldier tonight who sat at the, at the foot of the cross and I would, even, I would even probably say, Brother Todd, that if the wind blew hard enough, it would splatter the blood of the Son of Jesus Christ on them as they were sitting there. That's how close they were. Close enough that if they wanted to, Brother Brandon, they could have heard the Lord Jesus Christ talking to God from the cross. 
making intercession on their behalf for their mistakes. So what's that got to do with me? Every week we come into church, we step foot in here, and the place of worship, the place of to get close to the Son of God, to hear His voice, to worship Him, to hear from Him, to speak to Him. But a lot of times we come in here and we sit down and we're no better than those four soldiers that were sitting under His feet gambling for His clothes. And after it's all said and done, here comes this soldier walking down the hill, smiling, with that vesture thrown over his arm. In his mind, Brother Bobby, a winner. Oh, look here. See, y'all see what I want? I got the king of the Jews vesture. We played some cards up there and I won. I'm a winner. And the other soldiers, same thing. Classified him as the winner. He beat us fair and square. I don't want us to... I, let me speak for myself. I don't want to come into church and worry about all the other things that are going on. I don't want to come in here and worry about who's doing what, who's wearing what, who's saying what, who's singing what. I want to come in here and I want to know what God is, has, is saying to me. So many times we miss that. Preacher, so many times the man of God has studied, prayed, gotten a word from the Lord and we come in here and he gets up to preach and it's just like if you're like me sometimes you're just like not even not even listening not even registering thinking about I wonder what mama's cooking I wonder what they're going to have up there at the restaurant Checking, checking your, checking your bank account on your phone. Let's see, man. See if that bill came out. Yeah. I know some of y'all got it like y'all don't have to check, but I got to check. Amen. Before I swipe my card, I got to look. Amen. I got to see what's in there. <laughs> Make sure it don't bounce. Amen. But we got so much going on. Think already thinking about the work week. Already thinking about Monday. Already thinking about what's going to happen tonight. Where are we going to go tonight? All my favorite show comes on TV tonight. You against TV? No, I ain't against TV. Checking our Facebook while the preacher is preaching. Looking at Twitter, Snapchatting folks. Oh, I'm in church. Getting my church on. I'm not against those things. Y'all get what I'm saying? I'm all for whatever it is you're into. But this place here. I want I don't and the reason I'm saying this tonight is because I just don't want us to miss out on what God has for us. I don't want us to come in here with with, with blurred vision, so to speak, spiritual vision. 
trying to figure out everything else that's going on in our life and not worrying about what God's trying to say to us. So hindered by our own fleshly desires and so hindered by everything else that's going on. And listen, we just totally forget why we're here. I mean, these guys are sitting at the foot of the cross of the Son of God gambling for His jacket. Gambling for His robe. And a lot of times we come into church and, man, we just, we're worried about so many other things. Well, you say, well, I'm not. Okay, let me rephrase. I come into church a lot of times and I'm worried about so many other things that I miss out on what God's trying to say to me. I'm guilty. I'm just confessing to you tonight. Brother Keith, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of coming in here and just worrying about everything else and not worrying about what he's got to say, not worrying about what God's trying to say to me, not worrying about what the, the worship service of the choir. I'm just setting my mind as a million other places. Who's here? Who's not here? Well, why ain't so-and-so here? Well, what happened to so-and-so? Listen, let's come in here ready to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That's all we need to be worried about. Amen? Amen. And as, as I believe with all my heart, we're on the edge of growth and seeing different growth in our church. If we don't grow spiritually, it's all void. It's not, it's nothing, it's dead. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst. I've been in church services, Brother Keith, where there's been 15 people, and it's been the most spiritual service I've ever been in. Because why? Because they gathered in His name. A lot of times we gather, but we're not gathering in His name. We're just gathering. Because let's be honest. We're in the South. We're in Georgia. That's what we do, right? We get up Sunday morning we go to church. Then we eat. A lot of times it's just repetition, repetition. It's just, well, it's just what we do. We go to church here. Mama, mama always went to church. Daddy, granddaddy always went to church, so I guess I'll just go. Let me just say, I'm not saying any of this to preach at you tonight. I just want you to understand that Jesus Christ wants so much more for you than just that. The Lord Jesus Christ wants so much more for you than just His vesture to look like Him. You get what I'm saying? Because when that soldier got home, he might have put that thing on and he might have looked like Christ, but he was not Christ-like. And a lot of times I, I'm guilty, listen to me, I'm guilty of coming in here looking like I'm supposed to look, talking like I'm supposed to talk, acting like I'm supposed to act. But listen, on the inside of me is not where it's supposed to be. And if you'll be honest, you'll say the same thing tonight. And I'll be honest with you, church, I'm tired of motions. I am. I'm not saying that you're going through them. I'm saying I'm tired of it. This week I was praying with Bo. Saying, we were praying, saying his prayers at night. We well, always try to go in there and pray with him. Got to talk to him about heaven and hell for a minute. And I realized, Brother Moore said, he's coming to the age of accountability, which terrifies me. Because he's starting to understand. 
And when he understands and he's not saved, if he were to die, he would go to hell. And he's starting to get it. And he's starting to understand. I told him what hell was. Brother Keith, I told him that it was a place with fire and the devil and mom and daddy's not going to be there. You're going to be all alone. You say, you're trying to scare him into going to heaven now because that's the reality of hell. It's not a scary story. It's real. But then I told him about heaven, how sweet it was, how good it is. And he said, well, I want to go to heaven with you and mama. And I said, the only way you can do that, son, is to ask Jesus Christ in your heart and forgive you of your sins. And I explained to him what sin was. Well, you say, well, what's that got to do with what you've been preaching on? It has everything to do with it. Because here's why. If I'm a hypocrite in front of him, if I'm walking around with that vesture on, but I'm not listening to the words of Christ, there's a chance that boy can die in his sin and go to hell because of me. Because I'm not walking right. Because I'm sitting at the foot of the cross, but I'm not listening to what he's saying. I'm more worried about what's going on, the games being played. We need to be careful, church, not to be, get involved in the games being played and start looking up and listening to, the, to Jesus Christ and what he's saying to us. Because that young soldier could have sat there and heard him tell that man on his right side that if you just have faith and believe in me, you'll go to heaven. He could have got born again. Because why? Faith comes by hearing. He could have heard it and been saved right then and right there. But he was too busy playing the games. Amen. Y'all with me? It's quiet. I don't want us walking out of here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, carrying a vesture over our arm like we're the winner. Oh, we did our good deed. Got the vesture, look good, look like we're supposed to, but didn't hear a word he said. My desire as the assistant pastor of Grace Baptist Church, is for us to be the most spiritual church around. And yes, I would love to see this place packed. Top, bottom. I'd love to see our bank account full. I'd love, I'd, I'd, I'll be honest, I'd love to be at a place where I could be here full time. But you know what my main desire is? More than anything, Brother Mike, is for us to be a church that hears the words of Christ and follows Christ and serves Christ and is a spiritual, godly church. I'll Listen to me. I'll be part-time here until whenever. If we're, as long as we're spiritual, I don't care. As long as we're following Him, and I believe we are, as long as we're serving Him and doing the work that He tells us to do and listening to His words and listening to what He's got to say, I'm good with that. Amen? I don't, Mr. Drayen, I don't want to just have the vesture on. Brother Bobby, I don't want to just look spiritual. Brother Lee, I don't want us to just look like we know what we're doing. 
When people come in here, I want them to walk through them doors and say, boy, God is in this place. I want them to be able to feel the power and the conviction of God when they walk in here. Not because we sing the right song or we dress a certain way, but because God is here and we're spiritual. We don't come in here to play games. We come in here to get close to Him and to hear His voice. I want our Sunday school classes to be spiritual. A place of learning, a place of growing. I remember a few years ago when I was in Bible college, I went home to visit my home church, New Man of Baptist Church. And I was in Sunday school up with the young adults. I came down and I don't know if y'all know Brother Keith Dale. You ever met him? He's a trip boy. He's teaching the adult Sunday school class. I mean, he is up there having a time in Sunday school. Thanking God about for saving him and talking about how sovereign and good God is. And man, it just poured over into the service. Brother Tony told him, just keep on going. We walked in and choir walked up. Man, he was just still just letting her rip. And man, listen to me. That's what I want us to have. Spiritual. Listen, if we come in here and we're not about being spiritual, we're wasting our time. Amen. I want us to be spiritual. Amen. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we've had to be in your house tonight. I thank you for allowing me to preach tonight what you put on my heart. And Lord, you know my heart. Lord, I don't... I said exactly what you wanted me to say. None of what I said was my opinion. Lord, I want us to be a spiritual congregation, a spiritual church, a close church, close to each other, close to you. Lord, as we studied in... First, second, and third John, we learned, Lord, how to be close to each other. But now I want us to learn how to be close to you. Be spiritual, listen to your voice. Hear what you've got to say to us. Lord, I, I pray, God, that you would help us to take this seriously. Because, Lord, I don't want to just have the vest you're on, but I want to be real. Lord, when it comes time for my son to be saved, I want to have enough God about me to know how to do it the right way. Lord, I pray, God, that I'd be spiritual enough to have the discernment to tell him the right things. And to know when the time is right. Lord, that when my children grow up, they can say, my dad was a lot of things. Or he wasn't a lot of things. But he was spiritual. And he loved God. Lord, when this community talks about our church, I want them to say, they weren't big and flashy. But boy, you walk in there and you could feel God. They were spiritual. They were a spiritual group of people. They didn't have the lights and the, all the things, but boy, they, they knew who God was. Lord, I pray, God, that as we get closer to you, that we would not be about the games, but Lord, we'd be about hearing your voice. Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you for all that you've done for me and my family. 
And I need to apologize for not being as spiritual as I could be. Playing the games. Lord, I sure do love you tonight. And I thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name.